This is Dusty Jones here to talk about some ancient uh, multiplication and division methods and some not so ancient. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about the Egyptian duplation method, the Russian peasant method, and using Napier's rods to multiply. I'll also go through the Egyptian division method and briefly mention uh, the Babylonian method and the current long division algorithm. The Egyptian duplation method is so named because it involves doubling. Doubling was easy to do with Egyptian numerals. You just wrote the numeral twice. Uh, I'll show you 9 times 13, but without hieroglyphics. Here we start with 1 and 13, or rather 1 and one of the factors. I'll use 13. And then we go down and make columns doubling as we go. So 1 doubled is 2. 13 doubled is 26, double 2 to get 4, and double 26 to get 52, double 4 to get 8, and double 52 to get 104. I can stop there because I'm looking for 9 times 13. These numbers in the right column are multiples of 13. For example, the last one is 8 times 13. Since 9 is 1 plus 8, I can take the number on the row with 1 and the number on the row with 8, that is 13 and 104, and add those together to get 117, which is the product of 9 and 13. I encourage you to try this uh, method with 6 times 24, 7 times 18, and 19 times 21. At the end of this presentation, you'll find my answers to these. When fractions were involved, the Egyptians used a table uh, that had um, the e Egyptian fraction expansions of 2 over n, uh, where n was uh, an odd number. Uh, for example, here's how they would do 1 fifth times 10. Now I know 1 fifth times 10 is 2, but here's what their method would look like. Uh, we start with 1 and 1 fifth. Uh, we double the 1 to get 2 and we double one-fifth to get two-fifths, which as an Egyptian fraction from their two over n table is one-third plus one-fifteenth. Then we would uh, double two to get four and double one-third to get two-thirds. Two-thirds was a special Egyptian fraction. It was okay to have that. Double one-fifteenth to get two-fifteenths, but that's actually on the table one-eighth plus one over 120. Uh, then double four to get eight, and double two-thirds to get one and a third, double one-eighth to get one-fourth, and double one over 120 to get one-sixtieth. We're trying to get one-fifth times ten. Two plus eight is ten, so at the two row and the eight row, I'll add one-third plus one-fifteenth plus one and a third plus one-fourth plus one-sixtieth, and lo and behold, uh, this does sum to 2. I'd like for you to try 1 fourth times 9 and 1 seventh times 19 uh, using this method. And again, uh, my answers are at the end of this presentation. The Russian peasant method is similar. It was named because it was supposedly used by Russian peasants until World War I. Uh, the idea is to write both of the factors and uh, in one column we're taking half and ignoring any remainders. In the other column we're doubling. Uh, so for example, 26 times 17, I write 26 and 17. I take half of 26 and get 13. I double 17 to get 34. Then I take half of 13. I get 6 remainder 1. Uh, I, I ignore the remainder 1 and just write 6. I double the 34 to get 68 take half of 6 to get 3, and double the 68 to get 136. When we take half of 3, we get 1 and a half. We discard the half part. Uh, we get 1. And uh, then 136 doubled is 272. Now what we do is we look for numbers that have, uh, we look for rows that have odd numbers in the half column. And those would be the rows with 13, 3, and 1. We take the numbers from the doubled column and add those together to get the product, 442. This works because when we're taking half 
of one factor and doubling the other factor, we don't change the product. 26 times 17 is the same as 13 times 34. However, 13 times 34 is different than 6 times 68 because uh, we ignored that remainder. So by taking these odd rows, uh, we're picking up those remainders we left off. I'd like for you to try this method with 15 times 6, 13 times 12, and 24 times 23. Again, my answers are at the end of the presentation. There's also a method called Napier's rods. It was invented by John Napier. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as Napier's bones. That, that perhaps is from a mistranslation of a title of a book that he wrote that described this method. Or it's perhaps from the appearance of some of these rods, uh, which uh, expensive varieties were made of ivory. I've given you in your handouts uh, some paper that you can, strips that you can cut out, and um, I, I've got another video in which I demonstrate how to do this. And each rod uh, listed the first nine multiples of each digit, so you had a one rod, a two rod, a three rod, all the way up to a nine rod, and usually maybe more than one copy of these. For division, uh, in the Egyptian division method, the idea was to start with one and the divisor uh, that you were using, and to use doubling and also multiplying by 10 uh, to find numbers in the second column that sum to the dividend. So if we wanted to divide 1,120 by 80, I'll start with 1 and 80, since 80 is the divisor. I'm looking to add some numbers up to get the dividend, 1,120 over in the same column that's headed off by the divisor, the 80. So I'll take 1 and 80 and multiply them both by 10 to get 10 and 800. I'm getting very close to 1120. Then I'll double the 1 and the 80 to get 2 and 160. Then I'll double those to get 4 and 320. Now 800 and 320 add together to give me 1120. So now I look over in the left column, and I notice that the, I have a 10 and 4. So that means 1,120 divided by 80 is the sum of 10 and 4, which is 14. I'd like for you to try this method on 330 divided by 15 and 910 divided by 70. Again, the answers are at the end. If we want to take 19 divided by 8, uh, we might have to use some halves. Um, so first I start off with 1 and 8, and the idea is to find some numbers in the right-hand column that will add up to 19. So I double 1 and 8 to get 2 and 16. Uh, I have 16, I just need 3 more to get me to 19. The problem is that 8's bigger than 3. So I take the 1 and the 8 and I have them. So now I have 1 half and 4. I have those to get 1 fourth and 2, and then I have those to get 1 eighth and 1. And now I notice that 16 plus 2 plus 1 in the right column is 19, and so the left column numbers that correspond with that 2 plus 1 fourth and 1 plus 1 eighth is the quotient. The Egyptians would leave it like that. We've got unit fractions. You and I might want to call it 2 and thir 3 eighths. Please try this with 21 divided by 4, and you can check the end. Uh, to see what I got. Some other division methods, as I mentioned on a previous presentation, the Babylonians used reciprocal tables and multiplication to divide. And the current long division method that we use today uh, was first shown in 1491, I suppose right before Columbus uh, made his trip. It was the standard method by the end of the 1600s. Here are some answers.